This is Bix Ware with RoadToRuta.com. I'd like to talk about a discovery I made about 10 years ago and have been researching ever since. Um, I know a lot of people are wondering and have been wondering where all this physical silver comes from. We all know that the price of silver is rigged on the comics and the LBMA with computers and derivatives, but there always has to be a physical component. And every time you, we think we're running out of silver, a new batch of silver appears on the scene to flood the market. It really became noticeable in the early 1990s to late 1990s uh, when Warren Buffett was picking up some silver. Many large market participants were expecting a silver shortage, um, but it never actually appeared. And, and that's been the big mystery since the 90s is where is all the physical silver coming from? And I believe I found it. I found exactly where it is. And it's an amazing story. And I found it one day when I was lying on the couch watching the History Channel. And they had a, a, a show on, a television show called Lost World's Secret Cities of the A-Bomb. And they were talking about the making of the first atomic bomb, how they had built this city in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, a secret city, a huge secret city in order to enrich the uranium uh, for the first bomb. And here's the part of that uh, documentary that kind of woke me up off the couch. Only one of the war era buildings still houses its original uranium processing equipment. It's called Beta 3 and it was used for uranium separation right up to 1998. Until recently, the exact details of its processes, its location and construction were matters of national security. But by exploring the secret history behind this equipment, Ray Smith can now reveal what happened here. This equipment, the Kalutrons, were actually built by using magnets on either side of a vacuum chamber. These units are very heavy. That's why the structure was built uh, as sturdy as it was to hold the large single magnet that went all the way around this rectangular shape. They were to be the largest and most expensive electromagnets ever built. To work, they needed miles of copper wire. But this was wartime, and all the available copper was being used to make bullets and shells. Grove's men hit on a drastic alternative. Someone had the bright idea, said, why not use silver? Well, uh, that's, that's a very good conductor, but where were you going to get it? Uh, well, you could go to the Treasury of the United States and decide to get uh, what eventually were 14,000 tons of silver that were literally taken out of the uh, depository and melted down and turned into the wiring for the magnets at Y-12. Once Groves had borrowed the treasury silver, the machinery known as Calutrons could be built. Now just imagine what my jaw did when I heard about this, sitting there on the couch watching this. Unbelievable, 14,000 tons uh, was the original amount, supposedly. Now that's uh, about, I think it was 14,700 uh, that I read, and I'll get into that in a second. But it's somewhere around 450 million ounces of physical silver that was melted down to make these magnets. Unbelievable story, but it gets even better. Again, these are this is a picture of, of the mag magnets that are uh, used in the Calutrons. Just huge magnets. Look at the size of the, the metal and the size of the guy. Gigantic. And here's the facility. I mean, look at the little stairway. This is a monster facility. Unbelievable story here. So I started digging into it, and uh, over the years, I've come to find out quite a bit about what was going on with silver and our government and uh, the Manhattan Project. First, let's talk about the Manhattan Project. It was the most secret project in, uh, in the world to that point, you know, the invention of the first atomic bomb. Crazy, crazy amount of money, time, and secrecy was involved. Uh, they built a top secret city in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and a facility called the Y-12 facility. That's the facility that has the silver and calutron magnets in there. Uh, in order for the scientists to enrich enough uranium for the atom bomb, 
they had to make the largest electromagnet ever built. It would be called a calutron, and they initially needed 14,700 tons of copper wiring, which they claim was not available at the time due to war shortages. They decided to borrow silver from the U.S. Treasury to make the calutrons and then return the silver when the project was complete. Now, all that information was in the History Channel documentary, and, and it was good stuff. And it started me rolling, and I, I dug and dug and dug and found out tons more. Um, for example, the original request was for 470 million ounces of silver, but the program was expanded to 2.75 billion ounces of physical silver that was made available to the Manhattan Project from the U.S. Treasury. That, my friends, is a lot of silver. The official story, now this is the official story from the government years later when they said what happened, was that silver was returned right after World War II ended. And, and that, that story really got me thinking, really? They really invented the most important, valuable, secret military technology mankind has ever known. And then they shut it down and gave the silver back to the U.S. Treasury so the U.S. Treasury could put it in their vault so it could sit in the middle. Not a chance. Not a chance they gave that silver back. Not a chance they dismantled the Calutrons. So I dug and dug and dug, and here's the rest of the story. Now this is from the U.S. Department of Energy's own website. These are quotes I took off off their own website, so I, it's not like I'm lying. They might be lying, but it's not like I'm lying. Um, the reason for silver being used as electrical conductors for the Calutron magnets was because of a shortage of copper during the war. Now, silver is the best conductor of, elec of electricity. It always has been. It would not have been the best form of magnet to use in that Calutron. Why they even thought about copper, I don't even think they did. I think they knew they had to use silver. And they were just lying about the copper. Um, but it gets even better because they decided to make a huge upgrade in this facility. And this is from the website as well. With the decision to build enough calutrons for 100 grams per day separation of uranium-235 instead of a 100 gram plant, the scope of the project had grown significantly. Y-12 was the first of three sites cleared and also, the Calutrons were the first equipment to be fabricated. Very interesting. They just had to grow it because they weren't making enough um, uranium-235 at some point. I, I think it was before they started uh, manufacturing it. But this facility was gigantic. Um, and then this is from the site as well. Next, we will examine the difficulties Y-12 experienced when the first Calutron racetracks were powered up. They did not work. Wow, they didn't even work at the beginning. And they still shut them down right when they got finished? No, not a chance. Goes on to say this caused a major perturbation. I guess that means perturbed, pissed off, <laughs> throughout the whole Manhattan Project. Remember, they were in a race with Germany, or so they thought. A major setback like this was a terrible blow to all involved. General Groves must have reacted strongly. So basically, <laughs> they didn't work in the beginning. And then it goes on. The silver was used as electrical conductors for the electromagnetic separation. Once the war was over and the separation of uranium-235 was taken over by the gaseous diffusion process at K25, the calutrons were removed from Y12 and the silver returned to the treasury. Right there, the calutons were removed from Y-12 and the silver returned to the treasury. The remaining beta-3 calutrons at Y-12 use copper conductors, as do the four calutron magnets located in building 9731. However, the silver was used in calutrons located in building 9731 until 1970. Very interesting. So you're inventing the most important invention in the history of, the man, of mankind. It could save the lives of every American, supposedly is what they were saying. We have to beat the Germans at this stuff. And we finally figure out how to make enriched uranium. And as soon as the war is over, and it was very hard to do it because the calutrons didn't work in the beginning, 
And as soon as the war was over, we shut it down. We tore it down just to put silver in the basement of the U.S. Treasury. Not a chance. And it, I found out reasons why, and we keep going. This is from a book by the guy who was in charge of the project. The, the guy who was in charge of the Manhattan Project was Lieutenant General Leslie R. Groves. And he wrote a book years and years later, decades later, called Now It Could Be Told about the whole story behind what was going on to create that atom bomb. And here are some of the uh, quotations I got from the book where he talked about the silver. Page 107, the administration decided that the need for copper should be reduced by substituting it for silver borrowed from the U.S. Treasury. Just insane comment there but we'll just let it go at that they want to run with that story they can run with it doesn't change the fact they did use the silver page 107 colonel marshall thereupon called upon the undersecretary of the treasury daniel bell mr bell said that he might be able to make some forty-seven thousand tons of free silver together with thirty-nine thousand tons more which could be released from the backup silver certificates if Congress authorized its use through appropriate legislation. Wow. I guess there's not any question about how much silver was going over there. What is that? Uh, 96,000 tons of silver. 2.75 billion ounces. Page 107, 108. Under the terms of the final agreement. So basically they went to Congress and they got agreement to pull silver out of silver certificate program. So... The certificates were unbacked and out of the, the, uh, the reserves of the U.S. Treasury. Under the terms of the final agreement, the silver required by the project was to be withdrawn from the West Point Depository. Six months after the end of the war, an equal amount of silver would be returned to the Treasury. It was further agreed that no information would be given to the press on the removal of the silver and the Treasury would continue to carry it on their daily balance sheets. So we have accounting fraud at the US government admitted to right here in a book from the general who was in charge of the Manhattan Project. All you GATA guys should be jumping up and down saying, oh my God, we have proof that the US Treasury lies about their silver holdings and I'm sure they lie about their gold holdings too. And this from uh, page 109. Many of the precautions we took were aimed at primarily concealing our interest in silver. Anybody who thinks that silver is not a gigantic national security interest needs to read this book. Now it can be told because it is absolutely of vital importance to the United States of America. Uh, here's something pretty cool I found. It is a original balance sheet from the transfer of the silver from the Treasury to the Manhattan Project, um, it just cracked me up because, you know, we're talking, this is from 1943, and there was no computers back then to do Excel spreadsheets, so this is how they kept track of it on the, 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 the classic accounting paper ledgers, and uh, they, they counted it down to the, the ounce, um, even half ounces in there. Uh, it, this is just one of many, supposedly, it's table two, one uh, A, I think, of uh, of the uh, balance sheet of what was going on. So let's move on to what really happened. There was an announcement from Oak Ridge National Labs in March of 1999 that they are shutting down the Calutrons. What? Wait a minute! I thought they shut them down six months after they, you know, they won the World War II after they dropped them on Japan. Nope. The Calutrons were up and running ever since. Of course, we know that the U.S. government wouldn't just return the silver and destroy their ability to enrich uranium back in the 1940s. Um, so, yeah, it was up and going and running. There's the official announcement. Uh, ORNL is Oak Ridge National Labs. Calutrons wrap up historic half-century of isotopes. One of Ornell's last working links to the Manhattan Project may be finally retired. The Calutrons, which made enriched uranium for the first atomic weapon and later produced stable isotopes for a world still discovering ways to use them, will likely not run again. 
ORNL has received instructions from the Department of Energy to shut down the devices permanently. Up until about a year ago, the Calutrons were producing stable isotopes after resuming operations in 1995 following a three-year shutdown. Hmm, remember that. And here's a picture of the guy uh, still working on the Calutrons. It says, as a wartime technology, the Calutrons are ending their run looking and working pretty much the same as they began. Wow, I thought they had been shut down. I thought the military shut them down to get that silver back into treasury. No, they weren't shut down. Come on. Let's get real here. Why did the U.S. government shut down the Calutrons for three years in early 1990s? That was really interesting. So what was going on here in the early 1990s? Ruta knows exactly why they shut down the Calutrons. They needed the physical silver. They needed to get the physical silver out of the Manhattan Project and back into circulation because they were running out and they had nowhere else to go. So they had to shut down one of the most important facilities made in, in all of history just to get the physical silver into the markets. So where's the proof? How does Ruta know this if Ruta's so smart? <laughs> um, I did find proof. And there is proof, and I will show you where that proof is. It is right in this table. This is a table from the U.S. Geological Survey. And this table has historical data on silver mine production, silver recycling, silver exports. It's a great table. Uh, unfortunately, they kind of hide it now on the USGS uh, site. It used to be I could find that table no problem. I went to look for it for this report and they had hidden it. But I did track down a copy of it and this is it. Um, here's what I want to point out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven columns over is the exports of silver. And if you look at the exports of silver from 1981 all the way down, it's fairly steady, fairly steady. And then you see that highlighted area. It jumps from in the hundreds to the over, well over 2,000, closer to 3,000 tons of silver exported between 1995 and 1998, and then it jumps right back down. That's a huge amount of silver. The total of those four columns comes to 10,940 tons or 350 million ounces of silver that were exported from 1995 through 1998. Now, if you look at the far right, world production table, the world's production pretty much stayed pretty flat. And look at to the left under primary production and secondary production. For 90, 1995 and 1996, they have NA, not applicable. They are not even putting it. They are afraid to put it down. Why? Why? Why would they be so afraid? Also, look at the jump in the secondary production from 1994 all the way down to you know, all the way down to today huge jump in secondary production secondary production is recycling now if you look at from 1981 to 1983 it was falling 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 almost to nothing in 1983 and then all of a sudden the world changes and it's at 1700 tons was found somewhere and look at every month afterwards huge amounts of silver coming out of the United States in the secondary production or recycling area. Look at primary production right next to it, all around you know, 1,000, 1,900, 1,800, 2,000, all the way up until you get those two in A, 95 and 96, not, not applicable. They didn't write it down. What in the world is going on? And then look what happened for the next 10 years. From 97 to 2006, over 2,000 tons were, was uh coming out of the primary production every single year. What? Where? Where did, did we open some secret mine and all of a sudden everything was going and then it just stopped? Look at 2006, it just stops. So U.S. primary silver production rose abnormally in 97. It has stayed elevated at about 2,000 tons a year for 10 years before ending in 2006. 
and just dropping off the cliff. And now what happened in, in the silver world in 2006, 2007 timeframe? Our friends at Bear Stearns got in a little problem with their silver shorts. Right in that time frame. 2007 is when they admitted it. 2008 is when uh, J.P. Morgan took over their silver short. Crazy timing. But all that silver was coming out and then it just stopped. Which killed the, the Bear Stearns silver short. And in secondary production, it fell. It was falling. It was falling all the way in from 81 down to... Uh, 1993 and all of a sudden it goes through the roof and it, it stayed there that is all the silver and what happened in everything prior to 1995 it was the three-year shutdown of the y12 facility the calutrons were pulled out of the world's most important military facility because they needed the silver so here's some u.s government silver secrets that we now know Official U.S. bullion holdings have been lent out in the past. That's clear. Everything that it was said in, in the official documents of how the Manhattan Project was built and the Calutrons proves that. Two, the withdrawal of U.S. reserve bullion has been intentionally blocked from the mainstream press. They don't tell you. They, they even said General Grove said in his book, we couldn't tell the press anything because what would that do to the price of silver? Several bullion that was backing silver certificates was not in the vault at all times for possible redemption by certificate holders. You think silver is a big deal? It's a gigantic deal. There was nothing in the vault when the U.S. government had silver certificates out all over the place in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Number four, the secret transfer of physical bullion out of the U.S. Treasury has been approved and authorized by both a U.S. administration and by the U.S. Congress in the past. So they have set precedent. Those who say, oh, the, the government would hide, wouldn't would hide anything they're doing with silver and gold. Of course they are. They, they do it. And an interesting fact on the, on the silver certificate thing is that uh, JFK, when he became president, did go to the Y-12 facility specifically. Um, it might have something to do with them thinking about shutting it down and getting that people back into the, the silver back into the hands of the people at the time when uh, JFK was going to release the silver certificates. That might have been the silver they were talking about. Uh, number five, the U.S. bullion holdings have been fraudulently accounted for on the U.S. books, which was approved and authorized by both the U.S. administration and by the U.S. Congress. Yes, accounting fraud does go on at the U.S. government. And number six, the USGS, the U.S. Geological Survey, intentionally omitted data from their silver reporting in 1995 and 96, directly after the shutdown of the Y-12 facility. Is it any more obvious what has been going on? So what are my conclusions of all this stuff? Physical silver was so scarce in the early 1990s that the U.S. government made the decision to shut down a vital secret military facility to get their hands on the 2.75 billion ounces of silver that was being used in the Calutrons. And here's just a little note from Ruda. There was no place left on Earth to find that amount of physical silver. They had run out of silver, everything except the 2.75 billion ounces that was in the, the Calutron. So they shut it down and pulled it out. And that's been what's been flooding into the markets. There's your solution for why silver never, you know, always flirts with uh, shortages, but never really becomes a shortage is because all this silver was being used. So how much physical silver is left in the world now? Unknown. Nobody knows. But clearly not enough to keep Bear Stearns alive. <laughs> that is uh, just amazing stuff that you just heard. And this information needs to go all throughout the world for any silver investor, gold investor. Um, great stuff. And you heard it at the Road to Ruta. Sign up at the Road to Ruta. Go to my website and put your name and address in the top left and you get a free book. And the book is called Silver, Gold, Bitcoin, and God. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel and tell all your friends that you have discovered the secrets behind the silver manipulation.
This is Big Square, RoadToRuda.com. Take care.